All right, so in trying to figure out which pizza is the best deal when you're uh, ordering pizza, we basically need to take notice of two main things. Now, to show you those two main things, uh, I'm gonna go over here to our uh, menu. Now, the two things that we're really gonna be looking at here are the size uh, of the pizza. Now, when I'm talking about the size of the pizza, I'm not talking about just the diameter of the pizza, uh, which I showed over here. So we have a 10 inch diameter and a 20 inch diameter. I'm talking about the total amount of pizza that there is, the total amount of space that we see taking up, um, which is going to be the, it down, the area. Um, we're actually talking about the area of the pizza. So we're definitely gonna need to know the area of the pizza, how much pizza is there. The second thing we're gonna need to know um, and this one might be more obvious, is the price. Um, so we're going to need to know the area of the pizza and the price of the pizza. Well, I've already shown you the prices up here at the top. So the first pizza is $7.95, and the second pizza is $17.25. Now, your first instinct might be to say, well, this first pizza is 10 inches in diameter, so 10 inches across, and this second pizza is 20 inches in diameter, or 20 inches across. Your first thought might be, well, that pizza is twice the diameter, so it's probably twice the size. And some of you might notice, well, if I just take $7.95 times two, that's not gonna give me $17.25, which means that it would seem that the 10 inch diameter pizza must be a, a better deal. Now. In order to prove that to be true, we need to know how do we find the area of a circle? And I'm gonna teach you how to do that. Now, one way that we can think about uh, finding the area of a circle is by splitting a circle into pieces. Now, let me show you here this particular uh, circle. And I want you to notice that when we split this circle into pieces, uh, one thing that we can see here, and you can see it here, is we have uh, the center of our circle, which is here, and each of these pieces off of the center, so here, 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 and here, represent the radius of the circle. And remember, the radius is half of the diameter. So the diameter would be from this side to this side, and the radius is just from the center of the circle to the outside. So we notice we see that we're representing the radius. Now, one thing that we can do here is we can actually take this circle and we can split it into more and more pieces. So I'm gonna show you uh, what it looks like as we split into more and more pieces. Now, you may notice as we split into more and more pieces, you may notice that it looks like the circle is split up into a bunch of different triangles. Now, the only reason these aren't exactly triangles is you'll notice on the edge of them, there is a curve. Uh, otherwise, they would be triangles. And if we knew how to find the area of a triangle, we could just multiply it by that many times. Um, but there's that curve. Now, you'll notice that uh, as we split these into more and more, it looks more and more like a triangle. Now, one thing we can do is we can actually rearrange all these pieces that look kind of like triangles, and it would look kind of like this. If we rearrange, we have all of those pieces the same you'll notice that we get something that looks an awful lot like a rectangle. Now, the more we start to arrange this into smaller and smaller pieces, you'll notice they look smaller, uh, more and more like triangles. And if we rearrange here, you're gonna notice that you get something even closer to a rectangle. Now, think about what happens then if I split into something like 40 pieces. At this point, those actually all do look like triangles. And if we rearrange, we get something that looks an awful lot like a rectangle. Now, we gotta figure out what this rectangle means. Remember, in order to find the area of a rectangle, we take the length times the width, uh, which we could say the length is here, the width is here. That would give me the area of the rectangle. The difference here is that we can also call each of these things something else. 
So what I'm going to do to uh, show you this is I'm going to go back a little bit. Uh, let's go back to a uh, little bigger pieces. It'll be easier to see. Um, so let's rearrange here. Now, the first thing you might notice is actually this side, which was the width of our rectangle, is actually the radius of our circle. Um, so we're going to call it R because it's the radius of our circle. Now, remember these curved parts all together represented the circumference of the circle. Um, and I can show you that. Look at it. There's 14. Um, all of those curved parts together represented the circumference of a circle. So when we rearrange this, we know that the top and the bottom together, so everything up here and everything down here together make the circumference. Now, here's the cool part. We know how to find the circumference of a circle because we've talked about it. We take the diameter and we multiply that by pi. Um, so we know that the entire top and the entire bottom is the same as the diameter times pi if we would add all those together. Here's the thing, though. We only need uh, the diameter times pi. But then, because we're only looking at half on the bottom and half on the top, we're going to say for the top, we're going to divide that by 2. Now, here's a cool part. If you take the diameter and multiply by or divide by 2, you get the radius. So actually, what is on this top here is the radius times pi. Now, if we go back to 40, and remember we said it's the same as the length times the width. Basically, this is our length here. And this is our width. That tells me then that in order to find the area of a circle, you basically take the radius, multiply by the radius, and multiply that by pi. The radius times the radius times pi gives me the area of a circle. Now, we're going to use this. So let's go back to our pizza. And what I want to show you here is I want to show you uh, that we're going to say the area of a circle. So the area, maybe, the area equals the radius times the radius times pi. The radius times the radius times pi. Now, we know for this first, uh, this first pizza that the diameter is 10 inches. So the radius then must be 5 inches. So basically what I'm saying here is we need to take 5, the radius, times 5, which is the radius, times pi, which we're going to use 3.14. Now if we go up here, we're going to use a calculator for this. Um, I, know, I know that... I know what 5 times 5 is. Uh, 5 times 5 is 25. So then I'm just going to multiply that by 3.14, which is going to give me 78 and 5 tenths. And when we're talking about area, and then this is inches, uh, when we're talking about area, we're still measuring in square inches. Uh, so 78 and a half square inches. That's how much area is in a 10 inch uh, diameter pizza. Now, here's the interesting thing. For the second pizza, we know that the diameter is 20 inches. That means that the uh, radius is going to be 10 inches. So I'm going to do the radius times the radius times pi, which then 10 times 10 is 100. So I'm going to do 100 times pi 3.14, which gives me 300. And 14. Now here's where it gets pretty. And when I say 314, we need to also add, almost forgot, square inches. Now, one last thing I want to remind you of, which is kind of crazy, is we said here that because our first five inch pizza, or sorry, 10 inch diameter pizza to our 20 inch diameter pizza, we guess it's probably going to be about double the size. What ends up happening though? is actually as I go from 10 inches here, 
to 20 inches in diameter. My pizza is four times bigger, meaning that I have four times more pizza, but you'll notice the price most definitely does not go up four times. Here's the amazing thing that we learned from this. Because the the 20 inch pizza is so much bigger than that smaller pizza, it's it's four times as big, but it's not even close to four times the price. It's always the best choice to buy the largest pizza. So anytime you go to a pizza place and you're trying to convince somebody which pizza to buy and you want the biggest one, tell them about this equation and tell them that it's always the best deal to buy the biggest pizza. Now, before we finish, I want to remind you one more time that when you're finding the area of the circle, you are going to take the radius, you're going to multiply by the radius, and you're going to multiply that by pi. And just one last time to show you where that comes from, remember this idea of breaking that circle up into smaller and smaller and smaller triangles until we get something that looks like a rectangle. And that's how we find the area of a uh, circle. And think about that idea that it's always the best deal to buy the biggest pizza.